Greetings everyone and welcome back to Planet Zoo. We're straight in today. I am the bird and I'm very excited because uh, today's major mission is to get our first habitat going and uh, yeah, super excited for that. It's uh, what this is all about after all and it's taken us uh, three episodes to get there. But uh, here it is. So uh, laying out the pathway for what is the habitat and I'm sure you're all excited to know is going to be the spotted hyena or the crocuta crotuta. I think is what it is in its Latin name. It's a mid-sized uh, mammal. Uh, obviously, I'm sure you know that. Uh, people think it's pretty vicious, and it, it is quite a vicious animal. Um, but they're, uh, they're they're pack animals, and uh, they're, they're 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 scavengers. They're opportunists, uh, and I think that uh, you know as soon as you understand them, just like you understand any animal, um, they are they're good to go. Uh, but before we ramble on, or I ramble on a bit more about uh, the animal itself. Uh, let's just talk a little bit about this habitat. Um, as you would have seen, I'm um, going to do something interesting here. Um, my goal was to create something that had a, sort of two very significant viewing areas. Um, and what I really wanted to do is I wanted to create something that allowed uh, the visitors to the park to travel over uh, the habitat. Uh, the reason being is, is that uh, the hyenas are uh, quite sociable animals. Uh, they are definitely not scared of humans. Um, and thus I felt I could get away with uh, having the people very obviously passing through their habitat. Now obviously the humans cannot walk through the habitat, that would be a little bit too dangerous, so having the bridge pass over it I thought was a yeah, an interesting and unique way of, of, of trying to bring something different to our first habitat. So that's what you saw me doing there with the bridge and there's in order to do that that's to be sort of a sort of sunken area um, as a section of the habitat. Um, what's nice about the hyenas is that you actually don't need too high a wall. Um, so there you go. I'm sticking in the in the walls there. I'm using the brick wall to give give ourselves the curve there because you can't get the curve on the on the wooden wall. Um, and then the second area, which you see me doing over there, which I'm doing with a null barrier, and then I will add in the glass just now. Um, I must say it was very tricky getting these null barriers to go under the bridge and to to sort of look good. Um, yeah, that was a, the, probably the hardest part of this. Um, so getting back to that corner, which I think I'll travel back to just now, once I figure out how to put in the, uh, uh, the entrance gate there to the habitat, I must say that the, uh, the staff pathing and the pathing, it's going to be a problem for me. I can see that being an issue. Um, so yeah, you saw there, there's the glass, and uh, I think what I'm doing now is the sort of second feature of this of this habitat, is I wanted to make a sort of a, a viewing area um, that I wanted to actually look out onto the habitat's uh, sleeping area. Um, I'm not so sure that it's worked out uh, as well as I planned it to. Uh, I think visually it's alright, alright, it's not the best. Um, but uh, the guests don't seem to be using it, uh, so we might have to revisit this at a later stage um, and figure out why that is. I think it's because it's probably a little bit too tucked away in this corner um, and there's not enough to entice them down. So yeah, sort of uh, you will see me over the next few minutes uh, sort of building out this little viewing area, which is a kind of a rock cave. Um, and that'll extend out to include some of the rock work and cave work, which will include the sleeping area for the... Uh, hyenas in the end. So that's a good point to divert back to the hyenas. So the, yeah, like I was saying, they're, they're sort of generalist predators. Uh, uh, when I say generalist predators, they do they do hunt, but mostly scavenge. Um, and uh, they are kind of found sort of most environments, I would say. Uh, I would say apart from sort of forests uh, and uh, dry, dry deserts, uh, although I have seen them in some very arid regions, they are capable of um, surviving in some pretty dry, dry places, or seemingly dry places. Um, they're really, they're really fascinating animal. They're actually one of my favorites out there. I'm always quite excited when I do see them out in the wild. Um, they're definitely not an endangered species, but uh, like all wild animals, they are definitely affected by habitat loss. Um, and the best place to see them is in, um, uh, yeah, national parks, game parks, I would say, in the wild. It's always quite exciting to come across them. But failing that, uh, zoos are a good place uh, to, to uh, see them, uh, or conservation parks. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is I suppose, my, my attempt at that. I actually uh, have uh, an uncle of mine who is uh, an animal wrangler. He trains animals for uh, 
uh, movies and films and film sets, uh, they're all rescued animals, uh, they're all animals that uh, cannot and will never be able to make it in the wild, um, and thus they get a home with him and a little bit of rehabilitation, um, and they work for their keep by starring in movies, and he loves his animals more than he probably loves humans, um, and he has a, uh, he has a hyena, um, I think her name is Lola, <laughs> um, if I remember correctly, um, she is uh, quite the beast. Uh, anyway, they are social animals, uh, hyenas. I think they live in sort of big groups, packs or clans, I think they might be called. Um, I, I think that uh, like, uh, like, like wolves and, and, and lions, uh, or not lions, like, like wolves, I think the females leave, lead the packs or are, are sort of more dominant. Um, and uh, yeah, they, they, they do, they hunt in, in groups, I think, in small groups. Uh, not the whole pack doesn't hunt together, but they'll, they'll go, small groups will go out and, and, and hunt. Um, yeah, they're a really, really cool animal, actually. I think that they, um, uh, they yeah, they, in, 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 the, in, the, in the zoo, in the, in the zoo, in the planet zoo world, um, you can keep quite a few of them in an, in an habitat. I think you can um, sort of keep up to sort of three to four in, in a habitat. So I think we're gonna go for three. Um, I'm gonna go for uh, a male and two females, I think, um, into this habitat um, when we when we do get there um, to the stage of, of, of introducing them to the home. So back to the habitat quickly. Um, you can see I've added in the uh, rock work there. Um, that is the cave uh, where the uh, good old hyenas are gonna have to have, have a rest um, and continue the rock work uh, yeah, under the bridges and around trying to make it all sort of fit in together. And my golly me, I did a lot of rock work in this, uh, in this uh, habitat, I must say. I think uh, sort of halfway through I thought to myself, well, I've built off, uh, sort of uh, built, <laughs> have bitten off more than I can chew for my first habitat. But, uh, you know, it was a good learning experience, very large. I think I made it probably uh, three times the size that it, that it sort of needed to be. Um, yeah, it was a, an interesting, interesting experience kind of, kind of getting, trying to figure out exactly how big things should be, and I, I think I, I definitely overestimated the size that it needed to be, but it does look good, um, in the end, once we get, once we get everything in there, so yeah, just doing a little bit more rock work along here, um, really did, uh, spend a lot of time playing with the rocks, I suppose it's a good learning curve, uh, built up quite a few little sort of pre-made things uh, as well um, which I will be using further down the line as well um, yeah so this over here is uh, the other is actually the third viewing area um, that I added to this habitat I decided that as they people came down that path um, it would be a good spot to add in another viewing area so sort of looking out over to the bridge uh, hence the little glass in there and the slightly widened path on, on either side um, yeah it's looking very good I must say um, yeah, there's some of those rocks that we've sort of prepped out on the side. It's a little bit easier to come in and grab them, and this rock work just goes so much quicker um, once you've got a couple of those in there. Yeah, really, really, really speeds things up. Um, I don't know if you've noticed as well that uh, we had to plop down a uh, uh, in the corner there, and the top uh, sort of right corner of the habitat, uh, we plopped in some staff buildings. We started plopping in some staff buildings. Those are f workshop uh, items, uh, staff buildings. Uh, we needed them in there because uh, we needed to get uh, some staff buildings in uh, the game was running and uh, I decided that uh, you know certain animals needed to go to the vet for example there had been rescues and yep they needed a vet trip so we, we kind of plopped those in there as well um, I think I'll talk about uh, those a little bit later on um, when we get to the walkthrough uh, portion of this video and here they go in three hyenas so we get yep there we got three of them in um, and in they go um, there they come so the lovely hyenas are into our habitat and uh, yep I now use uh, the fact that they're there to help me finish uh, filling in the rest of the uh, environment so I don't know if anyone noticed there was a little pool of water that I added below the rocks there on the right hand side bottom right hand side in that dip uh, the hyenas don't require water within their habitats, but uh, I thought it's always nice to add something like that in. Um, and here we go, we start with the trees, uh, and I think this is really where everything sort of starts coming to life big time. Uh, people are already flooding down that bridge, you can tell that that bridge is definitely going to be the most popular part of this habitat. Uh, pretty unique actually, uh, I, I quite like it. 
Um, so here we go, um, throwing in some trees. There's that, that body of water uh, that I spoke out, that little, little body of water, which uh, actually it turns out the hyenas really quite like, um, to be honest. I think it's, it's, it's hot and warm and they like somewhere to keep cool, so yeah. Um, foliage, I had a lot of fun with foliage. I definitely placed foliage in this uh, habitat that is not uh, strictly uh, good or should be there for the hyenas. Uh, I know they don't necessarily like they like very specific foliage items, uh, and I do know that I, I bent those rules heavily. Um, I don't think it's affected uh, their uh, overall welfare too much, um, but you know, since we're playing sandbox, it doesn't really matter. Um, but if we do decide to try and let uh, turn all those sandbox uh, sort of options off um, and see if we can run this as a proper zoo, we might have to revisit some of the foliage in this particular habitat. Um, so yeah, I actually think this area up here looks really good and um, that sort of cave sleeping area I'm, I'm quite I'm quite uh, quite uh, Perturbed that uh, the visitors don't seem to want to use it as much as I thought they would um, But we shall fix that again another thing on the list to fix um, My goodness some of those trees that uh, are in this game are absolutely massive here like that there that that's definitely not a tree That should be in this biome. I think it's, a, it's an Australian white gum, uh, but it looks pretty cool there So mm, that's why it's there um, right, uh, we also dropped in absolutely every single available uh, food and enrichment item that the hyenas require. Uh, everything from uh, blood scent markers to large balls to sprinklers, uh, you kind of name it, uh, they got it. Um, I really did want to try and up the welfare significantly for our furry uh, spotted hyena friends. Um, and on that note, uh, I actually do want to sort of talk a little bit more about the hyenas and it's a sort of sort of very fun sort of zoopedia fun facts about them so uh, that that actual laugh that we all associate with the hy hyenas it's actually a distress call um it's uh, which i think they use it to uh to, to sort of call over the pack uh when they when they're in need of help um so yeah it's actually not um uh it's actually not a not too much of a not too much of a fun thing in the end, um, and like I said, that uh, even though they are scavengers, uh, they can actually hunt, and they do hunt. Um, particularly, I think uh, animals that they can sense are weak or weaker, or weaker, um, is something that the hyenas will, will, will definitely do. Um, yeah, and uh, I think I also mentioned that they're they're pretty much uh, female-led packs or clans, hyenas, and I actually think that the females are actually bigger than the males. Um, so yeah, they're they're they're. Uh, yeah, it's really hard to identify the difference between them actually in the wild. Uh, back to what we're doing on the screen here. We're adding in some, um, some uh, yeah, these are basically some education points uh, over here. Uh, dropped in some nice little shade there, a little African theme. Um, I actually did two. Uh, I think that the second one I didn't catch on camera um, because I dropped and forgot to record it. Um, I think that's what might have happened. Uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, we also dropped in some uh, some of the donation bins. Uh, we're going to put some donation bin covers for them later on as well. Um, and now doing some of the foliage along the edge here to sort of make this uh, glass viewing barrier look look much better. Quite a few aloes and, and things down there. African daisies. Uh, yeah, fixing the rockwork on the side of the side of the fence to make it look look, look a little bit better. Yep, that's looking really cool. As I said, I'm actually really quite proud of this uh, habitat. Uh, I said initially, uh, you know, in the beginning when I was doing all that rock work, I was like, oh my gosh, I've bitten off way more than I can chew. But uh, in the end, it actually ended up coming out really good and, and, and upped my confidence a lot in what we could do. Um, particularly since we tried something so challenging with that uh, that over overwalk bridge, um, which really is fantastic. I can't wait to show it to you in the walkthrough um, in a few. Um, Alright, so then uh, what else can we tell you about hyenas? Um, they are really intelligent animals actually. I think that that's uh, kind of the kind of thing that really actually draws me to them. Like they're, they're, they're pack animals, they've got group cooperation. I think group cooperation is one of the one of the best skills uh, animals have out there, or one of the greatest pack skills. Um, and I think that you know they've got serious learning abilities. Um, and uh, I think the most fascinating thing about them is their jaw. They can literally crush anything, and I actually have a personal story uh, about hyenas and, and jaw crushing. Uh, I was probably about, uh, I don't know, it was maybe about 10 years old, and I was camping with my, my father, and uh, yeah, 
hyena got into the camp at night there was a pan that was left out had some grease in the bottom and in the morning it was not a pan anymore it was a, a ball of metal uh, that had been literally crushed by the hyenas who uh, like dogs went straight for the fat so yeah hyenas they are a fascinating fascinating creatures and i'm excited to add them uh, to this habitat uh, first off so yeah we are i think adding in some of the last little bits of foliage um, we are also, uh, I think you would have seen there, those set of uh, people would have seen that a few more of those staff buildings went in there as well. Um, uh, there was a vet that went in there because one of the hyenas came in and he was injured and we urgently needed a vet. Um, and I am just making that area look just a little bit more like it's been uh, planned and added in there um, by adding a sort of little parking lot there. Um, and I think that we eventually, we also add a fence at some point. I might do that off camera. Um, oh yeah, and here we are with the, um, the, uh, bin covers, the donation bin covers, which uh, make them look uh, much better, I must say. Alright, I'm gonna stop rambling on and, uh, let you enjoy the rest of this time lapse, but I will see you all, uh, for the time, uh, at the end of the time lapse, uh, for a walkthrough. Um, until then, enjoy the music. Welcome back and I hope that you enjoyed that time-lapse speed build. It's now time for that part of the episode where we go and do a little bit of a walkthrough of what we built. And for those of you who are perceptive, you would have noticed that uh, between the end of the time-lapse and now, there's been some actual additions to the zoo. There's a drinks area over here and a sort of staff facilities complex here, but we'll take a look at them both uh, in a little bit more detail just now. So let's uh, get ourselves down. Uh, into the world of uh, the zoo so over there and um, we have this amphibian house and we built uh, this good old uh, little drink stand over here and we added in a toilet as well there's still a little bit of decoration and work to be done on the areas on the sides here which we shall get to um, i think before the end of the next episode but uh, the important thing now is having a look at our hyena habitat so we go down uh, this little path towards our little viewing area over here and we've done some um, done some uh, sort of decoration work here to sort of make it look good. Um, I think this looks really cool over here with the smoke coming out of the pots and everything. Um, so if we go down here, it's really quiet in here to be honest. Not many people come down the path. So I'm thinking that I might have to add something in here to draw uh, people in a bit more. But essentially the idea here is, is that we have a very nice uh, viewing area of the spotted hyena's sleeping area. And there's the feeding tray over there, which should give you a good uh, sort of view of the feeding. You see the hyena running there in the background. And then we've got some education boards over there. So that's this area. Um, then I think the most popular part of this exhibit is the bridge. 
um, and it actually turned out really well. So here we go across the bridge. Uh, another another education board there and some donation buckets and the bridge really looks really cool um, I think it gives everyone such a good view of the habitat um, you get to look down what's going on hi guys look there's three of them that's right there hi guys that's cool um, and yeah people seem to really enjoy um, this bridge um, it works well the guests love it um, and yeah it really does um, let you walk through the habitat in its entirety um, so let's just scoot around here quickly and have a look at this. So this is a staff area that I added uh, off camera. Um, and over here we have a training center. We have a vet over here. And we just have a sort of electricity pump house going over here. Um, and we actually did a little bit of decoration all the way down to kind of um, some cars and a bit of a driveway there. Um, I thought, would, you know, they, they needed somewhere to drive their cars in. So that's the little staff area. Um, and then obviously the guests are mainly coming over the bridge um, and then they are zooming out and coming around uh, the habitat and this is the other big viewing area over here which I think is kind of nice actually it's really large and expansive and it gives you a really good look down um, at uh, what's going on and there are our hyenas our three spotted hyenas and they come up quite close they come up all the way up to here which is amazing amazing views for the guests and they love them um, so let's actually go down into the habitat and actually say hi to them, shall we? Hi guys. So yeah, this is our hyenas. Uh, I hope that you uh, enjoyed this episode and uh, let me know what you think of this habitat in the comments. I think it's pretty cool for our first one. Lots of enrichment, lots of space, and we are looking good. Um, as always, um, as I said, please uh, hit, that, hit that like button if you've enjoyed yourself um, and leave a comment if you've got something to say. Otherwise, I shall see you all for episode three uh, at the end of next week. Until then, stay safe. I'm The Beard, signing out.